Welcome to our coverage of this year's 2019 Ultimate Callout Challenge and everything we went through to get there. Last year, you might remember in August, I took my truck and I blew it up. Totally blew the hood off, cam up the side of the block, just destroyed this truck. At the time, I didn't think we were going to be able to actually reuse the truck. You know, when we got back to the shop, we saw it wasn't as bad as we thought of the track, but I thought there's no way we're going to be able to reuse this truck. Uh, it turns out we were actually able to. We got it here, got the thing torn apart. We knew we could reuse it, and I was excited about that because I really like this truck and I wanted it to go well, and so I'm really glad to do that. A year ago, in 2018, we had a bunch of problems with our engine. We kept breaking stuff. I mean, we really ran out of time, and so we had to go to UCC with a real weak engine compared to what we were hoping to take. This year, we didn't have that problem. We did a, we've been doing building our engine throughout the year, piece by piece, and we have a really solid engine. You saw that in our episode called Meet the Engines. And so we took two engines to UCC because if you take something, you're not going to need it. You only need the things you forget. So luckily, we did not need the backup engine because we took it, so it was awesome. Saved me a night, a night of sleep of building it overnight in the, in the trailer this year. It just always surprises me, and anybody who's built a race car can understand this, it's shocking the amount of hours it takes to build a race vehicle. In your mind, you'll think, oh, we'll have this done here, and then this done by this day, and it never happens as fast in reality as it happens in your mind. So we were building this and we had some goals like, well, let's try to hit a test and tune. There's one in Fontana, California. There's one in um, Grand Junction, Colorado. There's a couple of different test and tunes we can actually hit and do some drag race testing before we go to the event. That would be awesome. We know we need to practice drag racing. Todd has not had this truck out since he blew it sky high. So what's the chance that the drag shock settings are correct and the cal tracks are adjusted right? and we moved stuff around so we knew the weight balance was off. So we planned, we're gonna to go to Grand Junction. There's one event the Saturday before UCC. Well, rain came, we didn't quite have the truck ready and we didn't make it the drag strip. You know, it wasn't for lack of hours that we didn't get to any of those events. We actually thought we would and just never quite worked. Always had a little problem, something we didn't like with the build. So we're like, even if we spent a bunch of time testing and tuning there, the truck's gonna act different. It's gonna come up on the chargers different. It's gonna spool different. And I learned in August, you don't take a vehicle to the track that's not ready to be at the track. Otherwise, big problems happen, like a major blow up. So since we weren't quite ready, we never made it to a track to get any passes. So what we figured, plan C, we're gonna show up at UCC. We have a whole day to test and tune before the actual contest happens. We're like, this is gonna be great. It's very easy to make a lot of power once. It's very easy to go very fast once. The trick is being able to repeat that. How do you make something that can survive the power? And so we spent a lot of time on the dyno tuning in the wastegates, tuning in the water injection, tuning in the EGT to make sure it would survive a full pass, a dyno, a sled pull, anything we threw at it, we wanted it to survive. Luckily, we had enough time to dyno, so we found some little issues. Dyno started acting up, throwing all kinds of weird numbers, and we just run out of time. With that being done, we're now ready to go to UCC. We've done a lot of dyno tuning. Um, the transmission's holding it just great. Um, we got the trans brake working. Everything's awesome, and we should be able to go. So for this year, we got loaded up. We actually were on time. Last year, we showed up halfway through the first day. This year, we showed up a day early, so we got to set up our booth, and it was awesome. So we're there Thursday, the weather is mediocre. Friday, it opens up and rains like crazy. All right, day one UCC, we just got through tech inspection, we passed, it hasn't really mattered because it's raining all day today. The track is wet, the whole place is soaked down. We're hoping we can get a small window, we can do some racing. We'll see, right now we've been sitting on our butts all day in the rain, so hooray. I was hoping to do a ton of testing Friday morning, get all that stuff I wanted to do out of the way, so come time for elimination rounds, I'm ready to go. Well, you can't, run, you can't drag race in the rain, so we're just sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, we get some, a break in the weather and the track is open. And I'm getting ready to go do my first uh, qualifying pass, and I just do a spool up test in the pits. Cut 
So he's playing with the trans brake and he's hitting the bump box and he's practiced bumping and staging, everything's going well. Well, we kind of weren't paying attention to the tranny temp gauge and about four spool up tests in a row and bumping at 20 or 30 pounds of boost, we overheated the tranny. Well, in the process of overheating the tranny, we hurt the torque converter, started dragging the lockup clutch. That's truly an human error. The transmission's been flawless. It took three or four right in a row, which you should never do, but you're just, you're so frazzled. It's a big event and you want it to go well. And so right there, the, the, the last one, I smell, it smells like rotten eggs. When you burn a torque converter, when you burn transit, it smells like rotten eggs. And so right there, I knew we had rotten eggs. And so we knew we heard it, but we didn't know how bad we heard it. Well, right then they opened the staging lines. Well, we checked and we still had line pressure. And I was like, well, Todd, the converter's probably not gonna hold and lock up well, but it's like, you can still get a run on the board and we don't know if it's totally hurt and then we can come back and change the tranny um, for elimination. So we go in the staging lanes, Todd shuts the truck off, he goes to fire it back up and it doesn't have any line pressure. So all the debris it made settled in, settled out of the fluid, and then got sucked up in the filter right when he started it. So we have low line pressure because the filter's plugged. We were doing some spool up tests in the, in the park lot. I think we did it too quick. And now we have no line pressure. I think we swap the converter. We go swap the converters real quick. So we go back to the pits and the guys go crazy trying to get the tranny installed. And the guys jack it up and, it's, and you don't have any lift. And so we're doing that with a little tranny jack sliding it out under the truck, real pain in the butt, but they're getting after it. And so the first qualifying session ended and we're still working on it, new one begins. We have a short amount of time. We're trying to finish the transmission swap so I can go up there and do a pass. Uh, UCC comes by and says, you have to be in the staging lanes by six. If you're not in the staging lanes by six, you cannot make a pass. And so we're scrambling, 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 and we're gonna be just a little bit short. So we send up a guy on our pit bike to, to hold our space in line. And then he says, no, it's gotta be your truck. We get back in the staging lanes, I think it was around 6.04. We have to be in the staging lanes by 6 o'clock at 6.05. We're still going to try so we can get a qualifying run in. Hopefully they let us make a pass. We'll find out here in a few minutes. Nobody's there to say we can't race, so we wait in line with the other 40 trucks that are waiting, or 30 trucks that are waiting to go because they're way behind schedule. We get all the way up, ready to race, and James Brandle, the race organizer, comes up and says, what are you guys doing? I was like, oh, we're making our test run. He's like, you weren't in the staging lanes at six. I was like, yeah, we're in the staging lanes at six. Well, he's like, no, you're in the staging lanes at 6.04. They said, cannot run. I said, fine, can I, can I just make a pass that doesn't count for qualifying, doesn't count for time, I just so I can get a little bit of data, literally, the last time I drove this truck was when it blew up, you know, nine months ago. I have not had a chance to drive it yet. I got a lot of dyno time and I'm confident in it, but I haven't had a shakedown pass yet. When's it gonna wanna shift? When's it gonna wanna do, how much boost should I leave at? I mean, it's a totally new truck. No information, it says, nope, you can't do it. Sorry, you can't do it. I heard another competitor complain about a few different trucks getting in late, which is really sad to me if that happens. For me as a competitor, I want anybody who comes out and puts this much effort into this event and this much uh, time, it, man, if, you, if you're able to compete or if you're able to do something, go do it, you know? If it doesn't hurt me, I mean, you're sitting in lanes for an hour, go ahead and run, so. But other people, to their point, there's a lot of money in this event, you know? If you win first place in the drag race, it's like 5,000 bucks or something like that. So, you know, if he thinks he's gonna win first and it's to his advantage to not have me compete, that's fine. So to each your own, I'm not saying right or wrong, but to me personally, if I was in their situation, I'd say let the guy run. We're here to put on a show. We're here to, you know, a lot of people come from all over the country to see our trucks. Like we have people from all over the country come to see my truck. I know lots of different vehicles that have the same experience. People come to see their favorite trucks. And so to tell a guy they cannot go on the track is to me kind of against the spirit of the competition, but I understand it. So that's, that's my spiel on that. But that's why we didn't get any qualifying runs at all. No practice runs, no qualifying times. We got a score of zero. So the very bottom of the bracket, we're going against the fastest guys. And that'll be our very first run. It's going to be against somebody who's got a lot of practice going very fast, so 
Yeah, I'm a little sad. Not a great start to the weekend. Kind of bummed. But sometimes it happens in racing. Hopefully we can uh, make the best of it. So we're going to give it a shot. So we go back, we wait, they call us up for eliminations. Since we didn't do any qualifying runs, we are the lowest qualifier, meaning we've got to race the fastest truck in eliminations. Keep in mind that Todd has not been in the driver's seat for nine months, and last time the truck tried to kill him. The fastest guy, I believe, was Derek Rose, and he got a buy. So he didn't have to make his first round. He's automatically in the second round. So I had to face the number two qualifier, which was Rudy's, Rudy's qualifier. His truck is beautiful. He has a, a very immaculate, very well put together race truck. I land up next to him. I did get the light. I got about 16 tenths, 16 hundredths of a second advantage in the light, or 0.16, whatever it is, 0.16. I think he leaves at 42 or 43 pounds of boost. Does a great big old jackrabbit hop, two or three hops. When I shifted, it went right to third. And then looking at the GoPro, GoPro footage, we moved the stuff around in the cab. And when I shifted, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, full manual valve body. So I have a shifter in my right hand. I, I push it forward. First, you know, I go pull away back first gear, second gear, third gear, flip on overdrive. I don't need overdrive for the eighth mile. So it's just second, third, and you're done. Well, looking at the footage, you'll see uh, when I hit second, my arm is like wedged between my seat and the shifter handle. And it, it fits real good, but that's, like I said, it's the first time I've actually made a pass. So I hit second, and it was such a violent shift, and it hit so hard, it bounced me, and my hand hit the shifter again. So I went first, second, third. So I, I just missed second gear, so I'm racing, I'm just watching them pull away. On the data logger, we go from 5,500 RPM and 100 pounds of boost to 20 or 30 pounds of boost and 2,500 RPM because it bogged the motor down. So the track held a lot of power because it pulled it all the way down, but you know the engine didn't like being at that RPM. So we had this slow acceleration. I think he ran 114 mile an hour, almost a second slower than Rudy. So although Todd did his job and beat him on the tree and did well, you know, beat him by almost 16 hundredths, uh, it didn't matter. The truck didn't perform, and you know this is a typical first pass. This is what you expect on the first pass of a truck. You know. It ended up getting a 655 ET, which is nothing to brag about. It put me about mid-pack, and so by the end of day number one, I'm literally like 14th place, I believe, out of 28. So I'm really right in the middle of the field. So I got one score, I got, I got one round of competition, which is points, and the ET is points, and so that was my score, middle of the pack. All right, just got back from our first pass, which is an actual race against the second qualifier, Rudy. Uh, he beat me thoroughly. <coughs> We had an okay pass for a test pass, it was not a good, it was not race ready. Um, truck went from first right to third, don't know why that happened, so I kind of missed, it, missed second gear. I actually had a better reaction time by about a, hunt, a tenth, full tenth on the tree, but it didn't matter, he's a lot faster. So We go back to the pits, and um, transmission's healthy, it's brand new, got one little pass on it, engine's fine. We're thinking, what, what the heck are we going to do tonight? Like. Normally, we're up in the pits all night doing something, building engines, swapping trains, doing something, and literally, we got nothing to do. Luckily, our neighbor next door, Donovan Harris, he's a great competitor, he, and he's got a, just an awesome truck. If you've ever seen his truck, you need to see it. But he heard his transmission. So we're over here helping Arm Rink. Arm Rink, uh, this is Donovan Harris. I've known, we've been racing these guys for, I mean, I'm talking years. I've been, we've been, these guys have been racing. And so if, if, if we don't pull off a victory, I, I'd definitely be pulling for these guys. They're probably one of our, well, there's a few of our favorites, but these guys are running them too. So anyway, over here, Will's got his hands deep in his transmission he brought over here. And this is Donovan over here. There I say hi, Donovan. He didn't How like you that. doing, everybody? That's Donovan. He's, good. he's a bang-up racer, also a good sled puller too, so he's pretty hardcore diesel. And so he didn't do as well in the drag race portion as he would have done because he blew up a transmission. So they pulled it out and they brought it over to our trailer. We actually rebuilt his transmission in our trailer. And Will's like, great, I got some new tonight. <laughs> and he's got a slightly twisted fat input shaft, yeah. and I have not seen one yet. I'm very excited. I honestly hadn't built a tranny for a while, so it took me a while to go through it, and I kind of went through the tranny and did a couple little lubrication mods and tricks we do to our tranny. And, and it was really fun. We got to hang out with him and Lenny, the owner of DDP, Dynamite Diesel Performance, and both really cool guys hanging out in the trailer, building their, tra building their transmission. So it was a fun night for us. It wasn't working on our own thing, but, you know, that ended up working out well for him. So, and honestly, it was fun. It was fun hanging out with guys and do that kind of stuff. So, day one in the pits was working on stuff, but it wasn't ours. 
And I'm grateful because Yuji's working on our stuff.